Now it's time for head X Y. In my humble opinion, do not start with individually deforming things on the face. And I'll show you my lazy method. First, let's get his hair back, and then select everything inside of head Z, but deselect the hair in the back. Create a deformer, name it head X Y. Make the conversion division somewhere close to 20 by 18. If you have any hidden layers that are left outside, for example, my tongue out and mask, they're all supposed to be in head X, Y. I just drag it back in. Then center the deformer, holding control. Then still holding control, make it more fitting to the face, especially the chin area. Then add three keyforms on both angle X and angle Y. Drag angle X to the left, and this is where he's going to be looking left. So this step is mainly for the outlines of the face. He will look bad. His face will look stretched, but it is okay. Trust the process. I'm good with something like this for now. We're going to come back to this later. But for now, we're going to then just copy head XY, paste it, then select your old head XY with everything inside of it, rename it to face XY, then drag face XY inside of head XY. Then scroll to find your face base and face line, and then put them in head XY, but not in face XY. So your deformer hierarchy is going to look something like this. And then I'm just going to select all the hair front and make a deformer for it. Call it hair front XY with conversion numbers 16 by 13. And then adjusting it to fit the hair a bit more. And always remember to center it because that will affect your horizontal reflections. And this is just for organization. So again, we're going to come back to this later. So now I'm going to select face XY and adjust it like so to make the face look more 3D and less squished. Then I'm just going back to head XY to make some more adjustments to the general form and keep going back and forth in between face XY and head XY. Then I just kept adjusting until I get a better idea of how his head turn is going to look like. And I can horizontally reflect both head and face XY to see what it looks like on the other side to make more adjustments. And we are going to make more deformers for like eyes, nose, mouth, back hair, ears. And this is just a general rough vision of where everything should be. And you might have noticed that my blush and face tattoo is not clipped to the face. And um, this is where I should do that. But I did not clip that face tattoo while I was recording for a while. So instead, I went to my hair front XY, I added three key points on both X and Y, and I protruded slightly so that the head looks less flat. I wanted my hair front to have more layering going on, so I made a deformer for only the bangs, so bangs XY. And this is where I made the mistake of forgetting to recenter my deformer. But I'll fix it later. So I moved only the bangs slightly forward for the layering effect. And I went back to hair front to move it back in comparison. Continue to readjust things as you go. And I do suggest having a reference picture. Now I'm going to do iris XY. So I'm going to select both iris roll. Make a iris XY deformer. Click consider child keyforms. I kind of forgot here. That will just basically give you a bigger deformer that considers your eyeball rolling movements. Because we don't want your eyeballs to roll outside of your XY deformer. Now all the usual stuff, just add your key points. Now I'm adjusting it and moving it slightly back. And then reflect to check if it looks good on the other side. But now I'm also going to do a pupil XY. So because our pupils are not in the same deformer, I cannot make one iris XY to fit both of them. So I'll just make two. So I made a deformer for my right pupil and just move it backwards to create a sense of 3D-ness. So yeah, go back to adjust anything at any point. Roll your eyeballs to see if your iris XY needs further adjusting. Then I made my eyebrow XY. Also check consider child keyforms when making eyebrow XY.
After deforming my eyebrows, I also made eyes XY by selecting both eye skin and iris XY. You get the process by now, right? More adjusting here and there, and this is also why it's really good to have a reference. One thing, when you select angle X to horizontally reflect, make sure that you deselect your iris XY. Because remember, we only have it on one eye, so it's not symmetrical, so you can't reflect the movement. Okay, next, we're going to fix his flat nose. I'm going to select everything in my nose folder, make a nose XY. Adjust my conversion divisions. Add my key points and make my nose pointy. And this is where my nose mask come in play. So at the head turn, I want to expand the nose mask to reveal more of the nose line that's clipped to it. So I'm going to first give it a heavy mesh. Then because it's kind of squished by the nose XY deformer, it's kind of hard to you know expand it on the spot. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag the nose mask outside of my nose XY, give it three keyforms, and just make it bigger at the side turn. And then when I'm done, I'm going to drag it back in my nose XY. I also remeshed my nose line to heavy for a less jaggy nose. So more deforming, I'm speeding up the process. Then I select my nose XY and my nose mask and reflect it, then fix my inconsistencies. Like my nose line is disappearing because it's folding on itself, so I'm just giving it some key points and expanding it. I also selected my face shadow and gave it key points and just moved it back a little. Then I selected all my back hair, hair back XY, and same thing, center it, give it key points. Deform. Okay, and I do realize my neck is kind of weird. But instead of redrawing it, I'm just going to stretch it up to cover up the top of it. So because I don't have any keyforms attached to my neck, this change is permanent. By the way, you can click this button to check if your current selection has any keyforms attached to it. Now that that's fixed, I'm also going to move my neck tattoo to create the illusion that my neck is turning. And we move on to head Y. I go back to my head XY, drag angle Y to the left, and I start by moving the face down so that he looks like he's looking down. Unfortunately, reflecting the motion doesn't really work for angle Y, so I'll just drag angle Y to the right and then manually adjust his head facing up. When I'm good with the general outline of head XY, I will move on to face XY, and I'll squeeze it upwards a little bit, showing the face shadow, and it will look like his chin. And opposite to that, facing downwards, I can also move face XY downwards a little bit. And in the same manner, I move hair front XY lower and higher depending on the perspective. And this is where I finally realized that my bangs XY deformer is not centered. So my solution is to first copy paste bangs XY. I select the old bangs XY with everything in it. I delete all the key points that are attached to it using this button. Then I can center it, holding control. Expand it a little so that it fits all the layers inside. And I drag my current bangs XY into my new one that I just copy pasted. And I select the top one, go to modeling, deformer, apply deformer to child elements. And it will delete my top bangs XY and make my lower one inherit all the motions. And then I reflect motion to center everything. 
So after some further adjustments, I am ready to synthesize the corners. Right click on angle X, click select, and then synthesize corners, click OK. It's going to look a bit something like this. His face looks wonky at the four corners, which is expected. So we're going to fix that. So first find head XY at the bottom left angle, do what I do. Your head is basically like a sphere. So a sphere at the four corners, it's supposed to curve. And this is what we're doing. I am done roughly adjusting the bottom left angle, so I go to the top left angle and, you know, I curve it in the opposite direction. And I can still reflect motion, just make sure you only have angle X selected while you click reflect motion. So I have reflected my top two corners and now I can reflect my bottom two corners. And we're not done adjusting yet, so I'm going to do some further adjustments. So when I'm working with head XY, each time I make an adjustment, I reflect my motion. But with anything else like face XY, eyes, hair front XY, so each time I make an adjustment on these deformers, I can directly synthesize corners to apply those adjustments instead of worrying about the four corners curving. Because they are inside of head XY, and head XY is already in charge of that four corner curving. It's also helpful to check your head angles in your physics settings. There are some settings that are going to make your life easier. So if you go to preview, settings for the cursor tracking, adjust your parameters to these settings. Click OK, and now you can right click drag for angle Z, and left click drag for angle X and Y. You can also choose posing here and click play and it will give you random poses which is pretty good for catching some bugs. Continuing with angle XY adjustments. So here I adjusted my iris Y. Remember to synthesize that corners every time you make an adjustment. But the nose is an exception because it is not following the sphere shape because it's protruding out. So we need to individually adjust the four corners. So like head XY, don't synthesize corners but reflect motion at the corners. I will put a recap at the end of the video showing you all the deformer hierarchy and notes about what to do for each deformer, like whether to synthesize corners or not. So if you're ever confused, it's okay. I have a shortcut on my mouse that's just the key enter, so I can click enter really fast when reflecting motion if you ever want to set up this shortcut. Then I am going to make the face line disappear when looking up. So we're going to find my mask that I hid um, just above face line, give it a standard mesh, then I'm going to make it transparent and then inverse clip the face line inside of the transparent mask. Now inverse mask, you know, the inverse of a normal clipping mask, and my face line will disappear where my mask is. But there still is a little bit of a problem. There's a little white edge that is the face base showing through face shadow because when I clipped face shadow in face base, Live 2D does this thing where it just leaves an edge. I'm going to fix that by copy pasting a face line and making the same color as face shadow to cover up that gap. Select the face line underneath, delete the clipping ID. In multiply color, just make it completely black and I hid the upper face line for better visibility and in screen color, pick the color picker and just get the face shadow color. Get the other line back and it's pretty fixed. So now we're going to grab the mask. Give it three key points at X and Y. Just expand it where you need the line to disappear. At the default key point, I'm going to move the mask back to the center of the face. And then I place where the mask should be at angle X. Reflect motion, synthesize corners, and adjust the four corners to complete this step.
So after some more readjustments, I felt like I needed to make a mouth XY, so I selected everything in the mouth, made a mouth XY, and made some adjustments. Then I went back to hair back XY and adjusted angle Y. But after I synthesize corners for the hair back XY, I need to readjust the four corners because it's not inside of head XY. This should be good for head XY, we're pretty much done, but this part of his neck, I don't like it. But I didn't draw an extra strand of hair to cover that up, so I'm just going to copy paste my hair middle, and I'm just deforming it to cover up the gap. This is a trick you can kind of do if you want to fill up some gaps in your head turns. And at the front view, I kind of squish the hair so that it's less visible. So after this, I just had to finish rigging pupil XY because I forgot to do that. Otherwise, head XY is basically done. So continuing with people XY, Finishing up the Y, synthesize corners, and I copy paste the deformer. So when you reflect something in Live 2D, like you right click, reflect, and horizontal reflect, it would take the, the reflection axis from the parent deformer. So if I directly reflected my pupil XY, it would stay in the same around the same place because the parent axis was iris P. Control Z to undo. So if I want iris xy to the other side, I have to drag it inside of iris xy, which will drag it outside of iris p. And since iris xy contains both eyes, now if I reflect, it is on the other side. Check angle x because it's not a symmetrical left-right movement. This is why when you make a deformer, you always have to center it because that will affect everything you reflect in it afterwards. So now we have to drag the deformer in its according folder and its according deformer. So I'll drag it into my left eye's iris folder, and I know it was in iris p, so I'll just drag it inside of iris p in there. And I can find it over here, and I'll put my left pupil inside of it. And it's all done! Would it be easier if I just made another pupil xy and re-rigged it? Arguably. But I like this trick. So here I'm doing another round of adjustments. But basically, with Live 2D and art in general, I recommend not finishing everything at once and come back to it the next day and you'll see a lot more mistakes that you didn't see the day before. Ask your friends and family for feedback and a lot of adjusting, tweaking, perfecting, referencing, and you'll get good. So here is the recap of all the deformer hierarchies. And the three methods that I use to make my life easier with the deformers. And so yeah, that was head XY. I would say we're done almost half of the model. You know, good job for making it this far. Next is mouth rigging and V-Bridger.